An incident changed your life at 14 years old. So this is all something that I buried for years. Nobody knew what was going on. Not even my parents, actually. My mother just recently found out a couple years ago when I wrote the book. Other than that, it was something that I had carried with me. I had 18 attempts of suicide under my belt. 18 attempts. 18 attempts. This is not a story of trauma. This is more of a story of triumph. When I was 14, I was a young 14 year old girl, naive, you know, just hanging around a plaza. I went to McDonald's actually with my girlfriend um, and that day forever changed my life. Uh, two gentlemen had driven by in a, in a smaller vehicle and they had a puppy hanging out the window. And what do most 14 year old girls do? They're like, oh, look at the puppy. Um, and those five words changed my life forever. I was trafficked for years after that. Um, Because I'm such a tenacious Sagittarius and very, you know, strong-willed, they learned very early on that the only way that they were going to get me to comply or to do anything was to subdue me. So they drugged me. So I, I, unfortunately, had um, a horrible addiction to cocaine for years and years and years, and I had seen some horrible things, um, things that I probably wouldn't mention on camera, but. The worst of the worst. I have seen people, um, people's lives taken in front of me. I've seen people overdose and die in front of me. I've seen people beaten to the last breath. And these are really heavy things for a human being to take on, but it's extremely heavy for a young child to take on. And I, I, I adapted to the environment because I, I was smart enough to realize that if I had tried to do anything that could go really, really wrong. But I had nobody to talk to. Um, that was at the age of 14. And then at the age of 15, my mother was involved in a horrific car accident. Um, besides all of her physical ailment, she also had uh, what was known as DID. So it's disassociative identity disorder. She hit her head so bad on the pavement that they diagnosed her with DID. So she had 30 plus personalities. So my beautiful mother was no longer my mother. So I had nobody to go to. Um, I couldn't tell my friends, I carried a lot of shame. And I think that's, you know, working with young girls and working with the clients that I have, it's shame. We carry so much shame and, you know, we can't talk to people. We can't have a conversation like this, Mark. And now I've got to the point where I can openly talk about it because I know that somebody needs to hear it so that they don't feel alone and that they can be like, wow, she did it, then I can do it. The, the last day that I chose to bet on myself, that's what it is. It's that resiliency. I knew that this was not my life. I knew there was something more. I knew that this was really just a path to get me to somewhere. I didn't understand why, because I was always the good hearted girl. You know, I'm the, I was always, even as a child, I'd hold doors for people. So I used to pray all the time and say, God, why is this happening to me? And then it was a shift in perspective. And the last day that I got away from these people, I realized that this is not, I'm looking at it as trauma. I'm looking at it as horrific, but what I really need to do, and I'm not taking away from trauma, but it's a shift in perspective to look at it like, well, what is it trying to teach me? Why is it that I need to learn this? What am I gonna get out of this? And it was that shift to turn it from trauma into triumph, into blessings, and then I really started to work on myself. And that was a long road mark. That's not something, you know, you just wake up the next day and you're all healed and you're all better. I was diagnosed with clinical depression, high function anxiety, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And they told me I'd be on medication for the rest of my life. So I really spent time disconnecting from the outer, the outer world, the exterior world, and I really started to go within. And that was by far the best journey I've ever taken in my life was the one back to myself. And it took a lot of work. I did Hakomi. I studied a lot of meditation. I was meditating all the time, like four or five, six times a day. I was reading a lot. I was journaling a lot. I did a lot of Eastern uh, approaches. I did a lot of Ayurvedics and stuff like that. Um, and I really started to align my energy centers. And I realized that I could remove shame. I could remove guilt. I could remove fear. I could remove all the apathy, all the low vibrating energies, which allowed me to vibrate into the higher energies, which are, you know, love and compassion and empathy. That's what binds us as human beings, as souls, right? Is we all want to be in that frequency. And so that was my journey.
for your listeners, I want them to really understand was that I knew that there was always somebody that was worse than me out there. No matter how bad it was, there was always somebody worse. I just want your listeners to know that there's always hope. I am the epitome of what resiliency and really betting on yourself looks like. And we all have that capability, right? We are so full of potential and possibility and we don't give ourselves enough credit for it.